Well hello there and welcome back to what is the penultimate video here at this freephotoshop.com series on the levels command. Now a series about the levels command just wouldn't be complete without a video on how to successfully remove a colour cast from an image just like the one you can see before you on screen. Now photographically there's not much right with this shot. Not only have we got an extremely intrusive red cast over the entire image, but we've also got, if I zoom in here you'll see what I mean, a very bad composition of pixels, and that's not caused by any kind of compression or even scanning artifacts. The reason we've got this horrible texture going on is because of the original paper the image was printed onto. And just so as you know, I'm guessing this was taken in the late 70s and the reason we're going to spend some time on making this image look better is because it's one of those classic photographs from the family album that sadly can never be taken again. And that's because my two granddads here and my grandma have since passed away. And I'm sure we've all got photographs like this that we want to remember people by so making a bad photograph better is going to be a really good thing. OK, I'm going to start off by dragging out the histogram just so we can identify what in the world is going on inside this image. And I'll open that up to the All Channels view, just like so. And straight away you can see just how bad a shape these channels are actually in. And you can see that pretty much all the highlights inside this image are made up from the red channel. Hence the distinctive red cast that we want to try to eliminate. In fact, another way to see how bad things are is to drag out the info palette and we'll put that over here. Now I'll just close this palette cluster so we can see more of the image and then just move the channels palette over here a bit as well. And now I can reposition the image by using the keyboard shortcut Shift F to toggle back to the normal screen mode. Now I'm just going to drag the cursor around the image so we can see that pretty much all the pixels have the same kind of numerical pattern. The reds, or the value of the reds I should say, is the highest, then the green and then the blue. So once again, that's just reflecting what we see over here in the channels histogram. The red occupying the highest luminance levels, followed by the greens in the middle here, and the blues residing in the lowest luminance levels inside the image. That my friends is not a good histogram. But I know that you know that, so let's move on. I'm going to change the RGB histogram to a luminance histogram, just to see how the brightness of the image maps out. And as expected, we see that it more closely reflects what we see in the green channel. And we can also confirm that aside the colour issues, we also have a problem with contrast in the photograph. Finally, I'm going to switch over to the colour histogram and just look at the distribution of colour and we can see the blue, the green and the red peaks here. We also see cyan where blue and green overlap. We see the tiniest bit of yellow we could ever imagine where the green and the red channels overlap. And then even smaller than that we see a horizontal line of black where all three of the colour channels overlap. And that's the red and the trails of the green and the blue. Quite unbelievable. OK, here is how we're going to work inside this image. I'm going to begin things here by duplicating this photograph two times. So I'll come up here to the image menu and select the duplicate command. And I'm going to call this one a walk down memory lane auto. And that's because we're going to fix this one using the auto functions. I'll just size that one up on screen here so it mirrors the position and zoom ratio of the first image. That incidentally will be leaving as is by the way so we can see how bad the original was after we've finished improving the images that we are going to improve. And now it's time to start work. Now I'm going to come back up here to the image menu and once again select the duplicate command and this time I'm going to call it a walk down memory lane manual because we're going to be applying our own settings to this one using the levels command of course I'll just get that looking good on screen and right about there looks pretty good now if you're ever not sure of what image I'm currently viewing just look at the title bar of the document and that should reveal which particular image I'm working on 
So we have a walk down memory lane, which is the original image that we're going to be leaving in its original form, just so we can keep track of the progress we're making. Next we have a walk down memory lane auto, which we'll be applying an auto command to. And finally here we have a walk down memory lane manual, which is going to be our own efforts created with a little help from our friends, and you'll see what I mean in just a few moments. For now I'm going to switch back to the auto version, like so, and now I'll come back up here to the image menu, select adjustments, and here we have our free auto functions, ready and willing to go, and as we discuss these in length in the second video of the series, I'm not going to go into too much detail right now, suffice to say that auto contrast applies the same values across all three channels, so if we go ahead and select it, we're not going to see a single thing happen. The histogram moves very slightly, but visually we're seeing nothing happen at all. So I'll hit Control or Command Z to undo that application of auto contrast. Next I'll come back up here to the image menu, select adjustments, and let's go ahead and try out auto color. Now this time we do see a noticeable shift on screen, but is it any better? Well, I'd say maybe a little, but it's nothing like what we want. And that's because with auto color, even though it's working inside each channel individually, it's still trying to maintain and protect the original colors inside the image. Most of the time that's a good thing, but when you're trying to remove a color cast, especially a heavy color cast like this one, it's not going to help the cause. Okay, I'll hit Control or Command Z once again to undo auto color. Finally, I'm going to come back up here to the image menu, select adjustments, and this time stack all of our hopes and prayers on auto levels. And wow, for an automated command that's actually done a pretty amazing job. And you actually find that most of the time auto levels does the hardest work in this kind of scenario simply because it's working on a channel by channel basis and not taking as much consideration as the auto color command did where color comes into the fray. Okay. I say that's done a pretty good job simply because we can do a whole lot better than that by opening up the full blown levels dialog box. Before I do that however, I'm going to switch to the third and final image called a walk down memory lane manual and then I'm going to hit control or command L on the keyboard to bring up levels in its adjustment layer form and I'll call this perfect colors because that's what we're aiming to get and I'll hit OK and here we are. Now don't ever forget these eyedroppers down here, especially the grey one. It usually does a really great job of removing colour casts, but as you'll see, if I go ahead and activate it here and then try clicking somewhere inside the image that I think should be neutral, I don't get much success because part of the reason is I don't know what should be grey inside this photograph. Another reason why I'm not going to use it on this occasion is because I came in here looking for all the controls I could muster. And unfortunately, even though the grey eyedropper is an awesome tool, it's not going to do the job that I want to do on this occasion. So I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key on the Mac and press this newly formed reset button. Now, here's what I'm going to do. You'll remember that when we applied auto levels, we got some pretty good results. Well, I want to start with those results and just tweak them to make them more suitable for this photograph. So to apply auto levels from inside the levels dialog box, I can either hit this auto button here, or I can hit the options button and then choose enhance per channel contrast, which is a fancy name for the auto levels command. And we discussed this entire dialog box, if you remember rightly, way back in video tutorial number 13, just in case you want to go back and check all of that out. For now I'm going to hit OK and the problem for me is that we've still got a tinge of red associated with the image. So I'm going to hit Control or Command 1 to enter the red channel and things are looking pretty good here. Certainly nothing unusual going on for a levels adjustment. So I'll hit Control or Command 2 to switch to the green channel and here we can see something pretty interesting. Not necessarily something wrong, but definitely something that we may be able to amend and bring back some better results. Regardless of that, I'll hit Control or Command 3 to switch to the blue channel. 
And once again, we see that the white point slider and also the mid-tone sliders are slightly out of sync with the tonal range, which, as I said before, isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just means that we've got some scope here to modify the channel. So whilst we're here in the blue channel, we might as well start things off here as well. Now, you can see that the auto levels command has left the white point slider around this area here because of the tail that's emanating from the bulk of the tonal range here. So I'm going to go ahead and ignore the tail for the greater good and just butt this slider up to the beginning of these luminance levels here. That in turn brings back the mid-tone slider. Nice work. Now I'll switch to the green channel because the amendments we made in the blue channel have left the image a little too cold for my liking. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing as we did before but this time here I'm going to do it inside the green channel see any difference so I'll just butt that up like we did before and I'll keep my eyes fixed on the image here not on any of these values but I'd say at this point here we're doing a pretty good job okay so we've certainly done a good job of sorting out the shadows and highlights so let's try and make these midtones a little more appealing starting right here in the green channel I'll tab my way over to the mid-tone slider and shift down arrow the value back to 0.9 just to take a little of the greens out. Next I'll switch to the red channel and likewise here I'll change this value to 0.9 as well just to lose a few more of the reds from the mid-tones. Finally I'll switch to the blue channel and this time I want to make the channel a little less yellow. And if you can't remember which way the sliders respond to each colour, then just grab the mid-tone slider and move it around. And here you say, ah, if I move it to the right, I introduce more yellow. And if I move it to the left, I introduce more blue. You can also refer to the colour wheel that we used a few videos back, which of course is available here to download as part of the levels exercise files. For now, I'll just move this slider to a value of 1.1 which introduces a little more blue and at the same time slightly diminishes those yellows from the midtones of this image. So you can see with the free midtone sliders, all we've been doing is moving them into a position within the channel that better balances out the tonal range, just like it was a pivot underneath a seesaw for example. As far as the image goes however, I'm quite liking the results we're producing by making the changes that we've made. Now for the final bit of magic, I'm going to click OK to accept these modifications and then I'm going to switch back to the original image just to see how bad things looked. Then I'll switch to the image that contains our auto levels applications. Much better, but check out the version me and you have just perfected right here inside this video tutorial. What a great result to get from manually tweaking those auto level settings that Photoshop provided for us. Things are really looking good. Let's check out that one more time. Here's the original image. Here's the auto levels version of the image. And here's our final version of the photograph, thanks to manually adjusting those luminance values inside the amazing levels command. Well, thanks as always for joining me here at freephotoshop.com. I'll see you in the next and final video on this epic journey inside the mind of the levels command.